Okay, um, thanks for the introduction. And um, right, so I'm talking about joint work with uh, Elan, and um, it happened that um, my my colleagues forced me to become the chair of the Columbia University department, uh, math department, and um, in the first semester of being the chair, um, Elan was visiting, and I was a little bit worried because I would not have any time to do anything. But, um, but luckily, Helen just forced me to do mathematics and it was, it was fantastic, it was great. Thank you so much, Helen. Um, and I will talk about it. But um, Helen is, of course, more than just a wonderful mathematician. She is also a wonderful human being. And we also had some wonderful dinners and went to the opera. That was, that was, that was marvelous. That was great. I can recommend inviting Helen to your <laughs> university. <laughs> OK, great. So um, and I apologize in advance for any mistakes in, in the talk, Helen. OK. <laughs> All right. So. Um, yeah, let me talk about an example that uh, Breyer sent us uh, to start off the discussion. Um, so you... Um, so in SL2, over the complex numbers, consider these two matrices, the elements. Um, So omega is a third root of unity, right? Um, <clears throat> and then, um, then these two matrices satisfy the following relation that um, a squared b a to the minus 2 is equal to b squared. OK? <clears throat> and now, um, so this suggests that um, we, um, so we, we let uh, gamma um, be the free group on two elements, little a, little b, modulo the relation that, uh, so modulo the subgroup generated by the relation a squared b, a minus 2, b minus 2, right? That you take the normal subgroup generated by this element, take the quotient, that's a finitely presented, um, you know, group. And now um, we're going to get a representation to SL2. Where, where you know a maps to a and b maps to b, and let's call this rho. This will be a representation. Okay. Let me start with the <laughs> the easy way. Can you still see this? Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then what turns out to be the true is that um, rho is irreducible. It's a rigid representation. That's a term that has come up in previous talks, right? And the trace of rho of AB, which is the trace of AB, right? You can just compute this 1 over square root 2, which is not an integer, right? OK. And so, um, in fact, one can show that. Um, so, uh, so more is true. Um, so all of these facts are, are proven by um, Broyard. Um, <clears throat> OK, uh, and you can, in fact, show that. So one can show that. Um, so this will be a player in, in also in the rest of the talk, right? So I have a a finitely generated, uh, you know, discrete group, and I look at the scheme of homomorphisms from gamma into SL2z, right? So over any base scheme T, I look at, yeah, okay, maps from gamma into SL2z. Uh, so question: Why are we interested in such a bizarre group gamma? <laughs> <laughs> You'll see. Um, no, no, that's of course a good question. Uh, but let me come back to that. 
And then we can look at the irreducible part of this. So you can look at the representations which are irreducible. So this is a nice finite type scheme over Z. And, and it turns out that um, this has a unique irreducible component um, um, which dominates spec Z, right? But um, if I take the, but, but it's, you know, let's call it uh, M prime, right? But um, yeah, whose closure, so, in here, in this slightly bigger thing, does not surject onto spec Z. Okay. Um, and um, sorry, what are the yeah. quantifiers? So are you saying this has a unique irreducible component, or there is a unique one with this property? <laughs> oh, sorry. Now it has a unique irreducible component. Uh, and. Yeah, which dominates spec Z. Right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, and then we'll say and. Thank you. And. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> Their closure yeah, of M prime in there does not subject onto spec Z. Is that okay now? Great. Thank you. Um, great. Okay, and then what um, this uh, what what the theorem that I'll um, state later by Elan and myself will then imply, but so th I'll talk about this right. This will then imply this property will imply that gamma cannot be isomorphic to pi one on top of x for any smooth projective x over c. So, um, so some um, of uh, Elan's work is, is about, you know, what kind of groups can can these, what kind, what can we say about these kinds of groups? And it cannot be this group. Okay, right? But, but of course, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Um, but there is, this is maybe not so, the, first of all, because of the rigidity, um, it's actually, uh, Briar also showed it was cohomologically rigid. And then you can use a paper by Eno and um, Groschenich to show that it can't be the pi one. But actually you can also, it's also trivial that it can't be the pi one, right? <laughs> because the abelianization has rank one, yeah? Okay, so, but, so maybe you can also, it also works for, so notice that a to the eight is one. So you can also, it also works for gamma prime, which is, you know, a, b modulo this word. Okay, a squared b, a minus two, b minus two, and then a to the eight. And then it's a little bit, yeah? You wanted to say, it's not uh, not uh, geometric like this for any smooth quasar project. Right. Yes, but I, yes, that's also and we also showed that. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And then there is no argument with B one. Then there is no argument with B one. Yeah. But you cannot. But it's also true that you can also take this one. Yeah. Thanks, Alain. Yeah, that's much better. Everybody okay? Great. Um, <laughs> okay. So now I wanted to talk. This is just me. I want to talk about this purity that was defined in this uh, wonderful paper by Renaud and Grusson. Okay. So bear with me. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Can I ask before we move on? What yeah. is the relationship between the row and what follows? Is row in that component or? Yeah, this row uh, will give you uh, a gen this row will give you 
See, because it's rigid, that this, this will be a zero-dimensional thing over Q. And the row will be a generic point of it, yes? Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you for asking, yeah. So, of course, when you have this row, you also have uh, all the Galois conjugates of rho. And that orbit forms the, you know, complex points of this irreducible component. Yeah, great. Okay, so... Um, let me try the, the thing. Okay, so... Because, so let, um, so f from m to s will be a finite type uh, separated uh, morphism of Noetherian schemes. And then, um, so definition of by, um, in this paper by Renault and Grusson. So we say F is universally pure, and I'm going to abbreviate that UP, okay, uh, if for all um, <clears throat> so whenever you take any base change and now suppose you have any specialization of points in T, so some specialization in T, and suppose you have a point X lying over T, which is an associated point of the fiber. So this means that, right? So this means that X is either a generic point of the fiber, or M. This is gonna happen more times, so, right? So, so X will either be a generic point of the fiber or an associate or an embedded point, right? Okay, but it's enough. It's already very interesting to think about generic points. Okay, then it should be the case. Then it should be the case that, oh no, let's call this point little m. Then m should specialize to a point m prime where m prime lies over t prime. That's the condition. And the universally is because we want this to be true after an arbitrary base change, right? Like, um, because it's related to what they were talk thinking about, about, um, um, you, know, um, you know, about uh, flatness issues. Okay, and, and in this case, you can, uh, it's, uh, you can check this flatness and uh, it's, it's much more easy. So, for example, suppose you're flat and suppose you're affine, flat, and pure, then the push forward of the structure of the structure sheet will be locally free on the base. Some, something like that. Same, yeah, some things like that. But we can just use this property, and th this is a little bit similar to, um, yeah. Let me not say more. Okay. Um, so, but this is their terminology, but I. In, this is some kind of integrality of this morphism. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you some facts about this prop, some, some properties of this property, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so, some facts. Okay, so um, if F is quasi-finite, then F is universally pure if and only if f is finite. Okay, so you, ca you can't have a specialization that... Yeah. Okay, two, um, if, for example, if f is flat and all fibers are geometrically irreducible, and an irreducible scheme is not empty, right? So not empty. Okay, then f is, p f is universally pure. Okay, for example. Um, 
And then the third property, this will be somewhat important for the, for the rest of the talk, is that if, if, suppose that S is irreducible, suppose that F is universally pure, and suppose that M prime in M is an irreducible component dominating S. Yeah? Then F of M prime is S. Right? So you have an irreducible component over the generic point of S, then actually it, it surjects onto S. Right? Okay. That's pretty clear from the, the immediate from the definition, right? Okay. And And then um, if M is affine and S is spec Z, okay, then, then it's a commutative algebra question whether this thing is pure. F is universally pure if and only if for all primes P, um, A tensor ZP does not contain a copy of QP. So this is what's cool about this is that this is just a property of A as a Z module. It, it forgets about the ring structure. Yeah. Uh, copy of QP as a, just as a, not as a algebra. Yeah, yeah. A, 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 as a, Z CP submodule. <laughs> okay, does that is that is that good? Yeah. Okay. And so the question I want to ask, and it's very, very, very far from what we can prove, right? But the question I just I asked Alain in an email, um, and it's not a conjecture. This is not a conjecture. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Okay, is the following, right? Um, where am I? Yeah, so, so let X smooth, projective, connected over the complex numbers, right? Then the question Is, is maybe this home space and I'm going to try to use GLN and not GLR, okay, maybe that's a mistake, uh, universally pure over spec Z. Or maybe that's, maybe it, it's Or maybe we'll do SLN. Yeah. I w can we just? It's it's already outrageous to ask this. So. <laughs> yeah, but the niceness about your result on the left board. No, is yes. Nice to cause a projective. For projective, we have plenty of uh, conditions that fundamental rules have to satisfy. For quasi projective, not so much. Jacob asks, <laughs> no, I mean, that's fair. You asked the question. Um, <laughs> okay. And, um, but maybe you can say for the character variety. Yeah, so um, it's important that you don't put irreducible here. Yeah, so you need to take, because one of the things that's going to happen with these components is that some, uh, you'll have some representation which is irreducible when, you, when you're over Q, but if you reduce it mod L, it may become reducible, right? And this may have, but the thing that went wrong in this beautiful example of Bayard is that actually some trace was not integral. So you can't reduce this representation ever in any way. Okay. <laughs>
Yeah? And that's why it's good to have these, uh, such a silly example, that this can indeed happen, right? Okay. Can I sort of rephrase that question as, is this, is this notion going to be compatible with going to a categorical, to a universal categorical portion? Yeah, I must, yeah. Yeah, I did, I, 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 I th this was so outrageous and Elaine was so unwilling to think about this. So we're, so that I never even tried to prove that it, uh, that it, it descends to the quotient. Or that the general question about the UP. Process. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I didn't study that. Yes, I, I'm very sorry. Like, I, I would think so, but I, I didn't try really hard. So, yeah. Is that okay? Did you have another question? Yeah, just a tiny, tiny yeah. comment. I mean, rigidity is taken really in this quotient. I mean, here it's never rigid. The example. Yeah, here, 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 this always has positive dimension somehow, except, yeah. Except if, if somehow the trivial representation is rigid. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so great. But um, now, uh, so we already discussed it a little bit, right? So um, maybe a better question is this, this property three here, right? If you have an irreducible component that dominates S, then you want the image to be everything. So you could ask if you have an irreducible component of the scheme, uh, which uh, doesn't live in characteristic P, does it actually subject onto spec Z, right? Does it have non-empty fibers for all P, right? And we could also look only at irreducible components, uh, you could only so also only look at irreducible components that meet the locus where the representation is irreducible. That's closer to what Helen and I are, are, are talking about. But the reason I, I was wanted to formulate this is that this is some kind of, characterization of this universally pure stuff, which is in terms of the ring, right? And so, and now this is ridiculous, right? But maybe, right? If you take the, the global sections, this is an affine variety. Let's say SL. You take the global functions, right? M maybe, right, this is some kind of, maybe this is some kind of cohomology, right? Oh, sorry, no, I shouldn't write pi, right. pi 1 top x of, of x, right? And then, you know, we sometimes know how to prove that cohomologies of uh, smooth projective x has certain properties, right? So, and I think this is impossible, okay? But my hope was that, you know, this would give you a way of, of thinking about this kind of integrality as a cohomological property, where you're taking a space of functions on, well, on a representation space of pi one, you're tensoring, you're completing it or not completing actually, that's not the right thing to do, really literally tensoring, right? But it's probably impossible to, to prove anything in this, in this way. Um, but that was my motivation for thinking about this, this this period, and also really loved this paper by Reynaud and Grissom. So, got to mention it as often as you can. <laughs> why, why would you even think that it had something to do with the homology or homology? Right? No, you're right. I'm just asking. <laughs> no, you, you, you. pi one is some homology or cohomology, and then we're doing something to pi one. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you, should, you should actually look at the project layer with respect to the multiplication by p to, to look at yeah, the class. We'll do it like, later. Yeah. yeah. Do you know if it's true if X is a Riemann surface? Um, yeah, I think so. Right, probably, yeah. Isn't it always um, sort of irreducible? Right, let's... Let. Yeah, and, and even uh, probably in characteristic P, right? So then maybe this cr criterion will apply, right? Number two. Yeah, great. Thanks for the question. Yeah. Uh, what am I doing? Am I moving the boards? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So what, what can we prove something about? You'll see. So we need a different notion uh, of integrality and um, it's, the statement will be adapted to what we can prove, right? Uh, and it's called weak integrality. Mm. 
<clears throat> okay. Weak integrality. Okay, so let gamma be an upside group. So definition, we say gamma <coughs> is weakly integral if given any row from gamma to GLN C, so complex representation irreducible Uh, with finite order determinant determinant chi okay so whenever you have an n for which there exists a row like this okay then um, for all primes L, uh, there exists. Yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful, sorry. A row L from gamma to GLN of ZL bar. With determinant of row L equals chi. And of course, that doesn't make sense, right? But I mean, via some iso of, Z, of QL bar with C, okay, so via some isomorphism like this, and rho L is irreducible, not, not over ZL but bar, but over QL bar. Right? Does that make sense? So. So the point is that basically, and there's no relation besides the determinant property between the rows and the row L, right? So what is this kind of saying in terms of this geometric picture of the moduli space, right? It's saying that there is an irreducible component which consists of, which dominates spec Z and consists mostly of irreducible guys. Then you can find a ZL bar point of that component for every L which hits the irreducible locus. Now, but not in the same component, just in the overall scheme. So this is not the same, this is not the good thing about the every irreducible component that dominates spec C actually subjects onto spec C. It's saying that if there is one, then for every L you can pick one. Yeah, so it's weak, right? It's a, it's a weak, sorry, Alain. <laughs> it's a wonderful <laughs> condition. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think if you're a speaker, you should also have fun yourself. <laughs> um, okay. But you're not just the two ends are the same. Sorry? The two ranks are not the same. No, they should be the same. No, no, okay. it's a rank and all the ops in Okay. Yeah. I think the notation is correct, right? So two ends are not Yeah. It's only that they agree as a de on the determinant. Excuse me? In view of the toes, we have previously maybe uh, higher uh, classes might be interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Yeah, so you'll see, with, if I get to the argument, you'll see that there's some issue with cutting out sub schemes of this Moly space where you, can, where you can do the argument. Okay, I'm not sure I'm even going to get to the argument, unfortunately. No. Okay, so um, great. And so what's the theorem, right? I think you're going to guess. <laughs> theorem. Um, Pi one top x 
is weakly integral. Okay, for any x move projective over c connected. I'll say I'll say your, I'll make your remark. Um, yeah. Yes. I. Uh, that's going to be yeah. And also okay. For x quasi projective, smooth and connected. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say that later, but you're right. So, okay, quasi projective. Good. It will save me time. Good. Okay, great. Um, but today in the talk, I want to discuss this case because it's just technically easier for us to talk about that. So, some. Is it more or less clear what the theorem says? Okay. So, and this implies the thing in the example, right? There. Uh, I, there's a variant for for x minus yeah. So there's the quasi-projective variant of this, um, and there's a variant um, in the paper. We prove a variant for not just having one row, but having infinitely many row, and then having infinitely many row l. <laughs> okay, and so this is means that. So for sort of the exist infinitely many row, okay? And i.e., what this means is, right, we, we're looking at at the dimension at least one part of the Moly space of um, irreducible reps but okay it take a lot of time to just pre very precisely state this but it, roughly that's what's going on and there's another variant for row such that when you take the image of row and you take this risky closure that this would contain s l n of C. Yeah, so so what what if you so d of course these rows have finite order determinants, so they're not so risky dense in GLN, but they can be so risky dense in the in 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 SLN, right? Yeah? Okay, and then the conclusion is the same for the right, same for row L. So this is like a tiny little bit of extra stuff where you can produce the row else. So the row has some property, you want to produce row else that have the same property. Because actually, right, if I have a row on some irreducible components, I would like the row L to be on the same irreducible components. But we can't prove that right now. Okay. okay. Yeah. Can I just ask, I mean, I understand you'll probably say no, not yet or something, but. Uh, what about putting other groups instead of just SLN? Yeah, great, yeah. Well, no, we, we, we don't, yeah. I'm going to say what you said I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, and, yeah, I don't know um, how to, yeah, I really don't know how to do it. Although maybe it's conceivable that a smarter person could do the same argument <laughs> in that case. So, uh, now that I think about it. <laughs> you could ask, so you, you can't control the irreducible component, whether it's on the same irreducible component, can you control if it's on the same connected component? No. No. Yeah. You'll see. <laughs> yeah. It's. But I think for Carlos question, uh, the two building blocks, I mean, your conjecture is true also for inductive proof, so... I think it doesn't matter for the argument. Yeah, so maybe yeah. maybe one can answer maybe. positively. Uh, then you need to know that if you do the companion thing, you will have the okay. same. Is group. that uh, is that has been worked out? Yeah, by, I uh, think so. Yeah. So uh, at the end, maybe the answer is yes. Maybe, maybe the answer is yes. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you for the question. It's a new another paper. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Would you like to stop now, or would you like me? <laughs> I, g I was going to sketch the steps of the proof. Uh, okay, um, is is that all right? Unless there are more questions. 
Yeah. Um, great. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> so given a row, okay, we can find uh, some, but actually many, um, L0, so prime number L0 and row L0 from pi 1 top of x to SLN of z l0 bar um, with rho l0 irreducible over q l bar, q l0 bar. So all of these, yeah, okay, right, because this is just a finite type property of this Moiley scheme of, of, of representations, right? Okay, but what we're going to use in the proof is that we have a lot of flexibility in choosing the this one and also next other things we're going to be choosing. <laughs> okay. And then the second thing is that we can descend this row L0. I'll say what this descent means um, to some, and actually again, many, um, <clears throat> row kappa bar from pi 1 of x kappa bar this will be the Grundig fundamental group to SLN of the L0 bar. Okay, namely, and what does this mean, right? We're going to do a spread out, right? So choose a, a spread out. So um, we have x over c. We'll have... Um, a finite type z algebra inside of c so that x can be defined over it and is still smooth and projective, right? And then we take a closed point. So kappa will necessarily be a finite field. And then we take the fiber, right? And then there, there, there will be a, a specialization map. Um, from pi on top, first uh, of x, well, first go to algebraic pi 1, then you have to go through, I'm going to call this whole composition sp, and then you have to go through this whole thing about, um, like, um, maybe taking, this, choosing a strictly Anselian local ring, you know, or, uh, at this point, and putting that in c and so on, right, and you'll get this specialization map here. Okay, yeah, this, this has also happened in other talks. And then descent, right? The descent thing, the descent property, right? It means that um, right, it, it corresponds to the fact that <laughs> Um, rho L0 is rho kappa bar precomposed with SP. Does it make sense? Yeah. Or isomorphic. Yeah. Okay. You should never write equal. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Okay. Okay. Maybe you first do rho kappa bar and then you do the specialization and you come from rho bar. So, yeah. Yeah, row kappa bar here, and then you have row L0 here, right? So first this, and then that, right? Does it? Yeah. yeah. No, it's fine. But you, you have to prove something there. Yes, and it, it's it's a, so the. Um, the, the thing about it is that this group, 
this, this rho L0 will not subject onto that group. It will actually go into SLN of a, the local uh, ring of a finite extension of ZL0. Yeah. The residue field is finite. So the, mo the residual representation is finite. So you can get that to come from one of these uh, fibers. And then the rest is L. So as long as the prime, the P, the characteristic of kappa is prime to L, that, that, that whole allylic part will be. Because by Grondig's theorem, right, this is an isomorphism on pr prime to P right. completions. And you can also pick this P to be prime to the image of the residual rather, to the order of the image. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But again, like, that gives us a ton of possible choices, right? And we're going to use that in the proof, and you won't, you won't see it, because I don't have time, right? <laughs> Luckily, I don't have time. <laughs> 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 <clears throat> so after possibly increasing R and kappa, right, um, we may assume, right, there exists, yeah, so these are all geometric representations and now I want to get an arithmetic representation, a row bar from pi 1 of x kappa to the to SLN of a finite field, FL0 to the n, okay, such that when you take rho kappa bar mod L0, this is the same as rho bar restricted to the geometric thing. And this is clear because as we were just discussing, this, this has finite image and the corresponding uh, finite covering will be defined over some finite extension of kappa and so you can just do this. Yeah? Okay. And now it gets more difficult. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lift rho bar to a different representation. So we're going to do deformation theory. And I would like to credit this to, uh, so Dunfeld has a paper where he proves some Kashiwara's conjecture. And this lemma is in, in that paper by Dunfeld. So, um, so this is sort of a lemma of Dunfeld. But it, it requires you to, um, to make your choices good. And in particular, I will say this now before I get questions about it, you can actually assume that this residual representation, this one, is abs an absolutely irreducible representation. Okay, again, by sufficiently, picking sufficiently general points. Okay, great. So um, for, okay, for a suitable, yeah, for suitable choices and possibly increasing after increasing right r and kappa, uh, we we so we prove there exists a. Um, Rho kappa prime from pi, from the arithmetic fundamental group to SLN of ZL zero bar um, with um, irreducible with two properties right Rho prime kappa irreducible over QL zero bar and Rho prime kappa lifts Rho bar. Right, so, so rho prime kappa mod L0 is rho bar. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but now this is great because now we have an allotic local system on a smooth projective variety over a field. Right? Yes, yes, please. It is but 
Everybody should know it is De Jong's conjecture. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Um, okay. Great. So we're almost there, um, right? Because what are we going to do, right? So, so we have this um, arithmetic L0 -adic, L adic local system with trivial determinant. Right, so we can make the uh, we can look at the companions, and we know the companions exist by a lot of beautiful mathematics, right? Uh, and then we so we can switch from this L zero to all other L apart from the characteristic of kappa. So let me write that down. So, I think, <clears throat> um, yeah, five. So, step five. So, this is the linear's companion conjecture, right, or question, um, uh, due to, you know, Laforgue, Trimfeld. Um, <clears throat> okay, so step five, right? There exists for all L not equal to the characteristic of kappa a companion um, rho prime L kappa. Okay, of our rho prime kappa, right? Which moreover, which is then irreducible over um, QL bar. So remember that a companion is basically, right, another representation so that the um, characteristic polynomials of the Frobenii are the same as for the, for the first one. And this, and this irreducibility can be read off from from somehow the, these characteristic polynomials. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So that's why you get this property. You land in, in this open locus that you want to land into, right? And then six, we win by taking rho L, right? The rho L that we, you want in the theorem, in this weekly integrality, right, you just take this rho prime L kappa and precompose it by the specialization. And in fact, one should say that it's geometrically <coughs> and absolutely irreducible. Oh, yes, that's what you need, yes. Irreducible uh, for, uh, for this, this, when you restrict it to the geometric thing. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's good. Pi on a kappa bar. And yes, great. And that's what you can read off from there. Yes, that's very, that's very good. So, um, any questions about the sketch? Well, I think I, I have too much material, so, so let me just um, stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions? And then... Why does that finish? Are you winning? Just be, because it's absolutely irreducible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so right, there's, this SP is sufficiently sort of subjective, right, that irreducibility uh, over here implies irreducibility over there. So in this um, weekly integral definition, is this isomorphism between QL and C allowed to depend on rho, or does it not matter? Um, there's a little bit better way of, 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 of phrasing this, because you know this rho has finite image, so you just get, um, 
you know, it's just some, some contained in roots of unity, right? Um, but I think all I'm saying is for every L, I want to pick some way of matching those determinants. Why you get this irreducibility? Yeah. yeah, I think this is related to what Elaine already said. That um, there, there are many different papers describing compatible allelic systems, and they always have theorems like this risky closure of the monodromy in one of them is the same as in another one. That and so, so that's how I remember this. Like you can read off irreducibility in terms of like what algebraic group you get for this risky closure of the image. And then I know there are these theorems, but Elaine provided the references for this. So maybe you could comment like what paper you should quote for this. If, if it's a companion of irreducible, then it's irreducible. What I mean is that you can also think of com homology, can you? Right. Because the companion uh, conjecture, because com uh, Geometric cohomology depends only on the uh, action of the Frobenius. Um, uh, if you group by weight, mm -hmm. but now we are looking at weight zero here, ah. so that's uh, one which doesn't move. Ah, okay. yeah. I mean, it's a rough way to say that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. More questions? Oh, it's Thank you.